Hi, good evening. Uh, I'm Lisbeth Shoho Tapuan. I'm a medical doctor by profession, and um, I'm doing this um, almost daily um, blogging because uh, there is so much. anger, confusion, hatred, desperation, that is going on around us. You always hear it in the news. And as a medical doctor, I'm trained to heal, to promote life, to do as much as you can, to help. And since I'm given this opportunity and this uh, some technical know-how, I am being urged by the spirit to do this and bear with me I'm also learning uh, doing this uh, blogging it is all for his greater glory and for to help out in my own little way in trying to see if it could make a difference for some people because I don't know who's uh, who's gonna be helped because it's only the Holy Spirit who would know so let me start uh, tonight I would like to talk about anger or hate dissipation dissipation is to know about how to let go to who have this anger disappear or how can we can we cool down but first of all let me um, do my daily communion and also my prayer for everybody so let me start father we believe in your son the Lord Jesus we believe in your amazing love for us father God in the name of Jesus we recognize that we have a covenant with you this new covenant was ratified by the shed blood of Jesus on the cross at Calvary Right now, we acknowledge that Jesus bore our sins, our sicknesses, diseases, sorrows, griefs, fears, torments, unforgiveness, strife, and lack for us, everything on that cross. Yes, Lord, we believe that Jesus' body was broken for us. His precious blood was shed on our behalf. We praise and thank you for Jesus. Glory to your name. By Jesus' stripes, we are healed in every cell, in every organ, in every function of our body. Thanks to Jesus, our youth is renewed. With long life, you will satisfy us, Father. Through Jesus' sacrifice, we have total and complete redemption. We are totally delivered from the devil in every single way. We are new creations in Christ. Our freedom has been bought and paid for. Yes, we are forgiven. We are redeemed. We are free. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we give you thanks. The Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. We will eat now. Thank you, Father. After the same manner also, he took the cup, which he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. 
For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. We take the cup in our hand and hold it up to you right now. Father, this represents the blood of the new covenant in which all our sins, past, present, and future, are all remitted. They are all forgiven through the blood of Jesus. Praise your holy name. Through his blood, we and our family are redeemed from every curse, every ancestral curse, from every single curse of the law. Thank you. We will drink now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're a good, good God. You gave up your son to remove the barrier standing between you and us. Thank you so much, Father. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you that above all else, you desire that we prosper and be in health even as our soul prospers. We declare a new dimension of health, a new level of faith, a new realm of energy and divine strength. We declare that we are living, walking testimonies to all those around us who are defeated in this world. We have victory and new life in Jesus. Oh, that the world would come to know you. Protect, preserve, bless, and reach every single person in our family and our friends. In the wonderful and precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. May Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Come Holy Spirit, fill my heart with your holy gifts. Let my weakness be penetrated with thy strength this very day, that I may fulfill all my duties conscientiously, that I may do what is right and just. Let my charities be such as to offend no one and hurt no one's feeling. So generous to pardon sincerely any wrong done to us. Assist us, O Holy Spirit, in all the trials of life. Enlighten us in our ignorance, advise in our doubt. Strengthen us in our weakness. Help us in all need and embarrassment. Protect us in temptations. Graciously hear us, O Holy Spirit, and pour thy light into our hearts, our soul, our mind. Assist us to live a holy life, to grow in goodness and grace. Amen. In your mighty name, Lord Jesus Christ, I take authority and I bind all powers and forces in the air and the ground, in the water, underground, netherworld, nature, and man. You are the Lord over the entire universe and we give you the glory for your creation. In your name, Lord Jesus, I bind all demonic forces, all forces of bad things, all negativity, all forces of evil, illness, sickness, infection, financial obstacles, professional obstacles, mountains, strife, curse, family division, relationship division, depression, anxiety, worry, darkness, anger, hatred, that have come against my family, Rod, Lil, Rod, and me, and my family and relatives, my brothers and sisters and their families, and my relatives and their own families, and the relatives of my husband and their families, and all my friends, acquaintances, All people who are sick, mentally, physically, emotionally, and all those who are, who are in prison, either physically, emotionally, and mentally. And those who have... Uh, slept before us and all those poor souls in purgatory. And I seal all of us with your precious blood that was shed for us on the cross. Mary, our mother, we seek your protection and intercession for the sacred heart of Jesus for us and our families. Surround us with your mantle of love that scars the enemy. Saint Michael, our guardian angel, 
Come defend us and our families against the evil ones that roam the earth. In your name, Lord Jesus Christ, I bind all demonic forces or forces of evil to get out of our families, friends, our land, and this earth. In your mighty name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, let, there's a very nice song in the Philippines where it's sung by a famous uh, Christian singer and very popular too and the title of his song is uh, take me out of this darkness and it says in the midst of the fear anxiety and uncertainty that surrounds us all perhaps all this can serve as a way of drawing us near to Jesus. This may be a personal crossroad for many who have often relied on science and medicine. Both are struggling to find a cure for COVID. I strongly and but humbly encourage you to take the path that leads to him and this is uh, written by uh, the famous Gary Valenciano I'm just reading his uh, description on the uh, song it says no my friend this isn't about religion but something deeper it's life as we know it today, and many changes have come with it. But he has remained the same yesterday, today, and will remain the same forever. Um, it's very, very appropriate now. And he says, I pray he gives wisdom to all the scientists and doctors who have been exhausting all efforts to come up with solution for the threat that's now invaded most of the world. And this is take me out of the dark. And it's a very good song. We'll listen. Just what is it in me? Sometimes I just don't know what keeps me in your love. And why you never let me go And though you're in me now I fall and hurt you still My Lord, please show me how To know just how you feel Cause you have forgiven me Too many times it seems I'm not what you might call a worthy Christian after all And though I love you so, temptation finds its way to me Teach me to trust in you with all of my heart To lean not on my own understanding Just forget You won't give me what I can bear Take me out of the dark, my 
Lord, I don't want to be fair. No, no, no more. You've never left my side. You gave your hand to me to hold. Oh, Jesus, I'm no longer in the cold. When I feel satisfied, I'd like to thank you every day. Not only when I feel this way, I've never known a man who'd give his life for sinners like me. Yet because he loves us so, he's promised us eternity. And we can have that promise and be his if we have faith and just believe. Teach me to trust in you with all of my heart. To lean not on my own understanding, cause I just forget. I don't want to be alone Take me out of the dark, my Lord I don't want to be there No, no, my song that during the time of darkness our storm our trials let us not lean on our own understanding but to trust God that he is we he what we're going through is he is in control. We just have to really rely on God, on the Holy Spirit, of what the Holy Spirit is prompting us. And sometimes it's really hard to do it 
all by ourselves and we're not alone and you think you're alone no we are never alone we are never alone it's always the spirit is with us there's a guardian angel and there's also some um, evil ones who's trying to take us away from from god because he knows that god has given us a free choice now let me uh get to this uh talk that i have so what is anger is a normal emotion when expressed in healthy and positive way anger is not a problem but when anger is uncontrolled passive suppressed or aggressive it may lead to destructive behavior anxiety pressure headache coronary disease autoimmune disorders digestive disorders insomnia depression and a lot of unhealthy um, ailments all uh, it is not good for the body and sometimes suicide or homicide In an article um, published by Mayo Clinic, it offers uh, 10 tips of taming our anger. Now, hatred is the in intense anger, intense hostility and aversion usually deriving from fear, anger, or sense of injury. Now, what is dissipation? Dissipation is you're trying to remove, to let go. Like an example of this uh, background I have. Um, it's the fireworks and how, if you look at it, it is fired up and then it explodes. It explodes in either... A negative way or positive way where if it's you know you are able to do it in a positive way it becomes colorful but we have to learn how to to manage it to have it disappear like even the fireworks see it it uh, it explodes it but then with all the rays the you know and then it disappears so i take this as like a positive thing there were you try ways and means to have this emotion dissipate Yesterday, I was uh, talking about this too, and I have included sublimation. But I just want to concentrate on the dissipation, which I think is, uh, is very, very important. Now, in the scriptures, God has given us tools to be able to cope. He has given us words on how we should let go. I know it's easier said than done. I've, I've been there. There were sometimes this anger. It's, diff it's so difficult. But when you let it stay with you, it's... It's the, 
uh, deleterious, harmful to your body and to others too. Now, um, in James 4, verse 1, it says, uh, Your desires that battle within you. The evil one thrives on envy, pride, ego, self-righteousness, and indulgence in worldly pra- uh, pleasures. This is spiritual wal- uh, warfare. Satan's persistent desire to steal, kill, and destroy our faith in God. A spirit whom God has caused us to live in us through Jesus gives us greater gift than any earthly gain, grace upon grace, which we did not earn for ourselves. No, uh, there are Bible Bible verses. It says, I'll just uh, name a few. It says, Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. For those who are evil will be destroyed. But those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. A little while, and the wicked will be no more. Though you look for them, they will not be found. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. Because if we don't let it go, then, you know, the devil will, will try to tempt you, try to, to put some issues in your mind. Get rid of all bitterness. That is in Ephesians 4 verse 31. It says, Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. And then in John 1, verse 19 to 20, it says, My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. And sometimes this is difficult. That's why we, Jesus, God, gave us the Holy Spirit to live in us. Because they, God knows human nature, knows us more than we know ourselves. And the Holy Spirit is there for us to ask Him to guide us, to fill us with His gifts, so that we'll always be pleasing to God. Because that's the, that's the uh, goal, is to please God so that when we live this life, we will be with Him to paradise in heaven. I don't want, you don't want to go to hell where there's all fire and, no, that is the goal. So we have, but we have to do our part. We have to practice our faith. We have to always boost our happy hormones so that we'll, it will be easier for us to, to, Get rid of the anger, the negativity, the negative emotions, which is creating havoc not only to the people we love, to the people we live in, we work with. 
it's creating havoc to our body. And a lot of people are, you know, now every most are health conscious. You know, that's why they go, you know, they go to whole food stores. You know, you there's so much stuff in the internet about how to be uh, healthy. What's the right food to eat? What's the right thing to do? So, if that's what we're doing and there's something in us that is free we just have to cultivate it we have to nurture it he says uh, in matthew 5 verse 22 it says but i tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment again anyone who says to a brother or sister raka is answerable to the court and anyone who says you fool will be in danger of the fire of hell so you know sometimes it's hard to refrain ourselves but we had just have to keep on trying Sometimes it's better to be quiet you know, than we spill out the words. Now let's see other um, verses here. Proverbs 14 to 29. Whoever is patient has great understanding, but who is quick temper display fully. That's Proverbs 14, 29. Proverbs 15, 1, a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word steers up anger. Proverbs 15 to 18, a hot-tempered person steers up conflict, but the one who is patient comes a quarrel. Proverbs uh, 16, verse 32, it says, Better a patient person than a warrior, one with self-control, than the one who takes a city. Proverbs 19, verse 11 says, A person's wisdom yields patience. It is the it is to one's glory to overlook an offense. Again, it says, A person's wisdom yields patience. It is to one's glory to overlook an offense. Proverbs 22, 24 to 25 says, Do not make friends with a hot-tempered person. Do not associate with one easily angered or you may learn their ways and get yourself ensnared proverbs 29 verse 11 fools give full vent to their rage but the wise bring calm in the end so the bible has so much stuff for for us to learn it's a recipe on how we should live our life. And you and when you read, you have to ask the Holy Spirit to help you discern what is the right point for you. In 2 Timothy 2 verse 23 to 25 says but keep away from foolish and ignorant arguments. You know that they end up in quarrels. As the Lord's servant, you must not quarrel. You must be kind toward all. Be good and patient teacher who is gentle as you correct your opponents. For it may be that God will give them the opportunity to repent 
and come to know the truth. So, let's see how does anger harm our health so that we have to keep that in mind. If we want to be healthy, we have to check ourselves. So, first, According to Debbie Strong, I saw this in uh, uh, online article, everydayhealth.com. Anyway, and there's truth to this. So, first, an angry outburst put your heart at great risk. Most physically damaging is anger's effect on your cardiac health. In the two hours after an angry outburst, it's after, see? The chance of having a heart attack doubles. Wow. So even after you're angry, you can still have a heart attack. So why take the chance? That is uh, Dr. says Dr. Chris Aiken, an instructor in clinical psychiatry in Wake Forest University School of Me Medicine and director of Mood Treatment Center in Wisconsin, Salem, North Carolina. And repressed anger where you express it directly or go to great lengths to control it, is associated with heart disease, says Dr. Aiken. In fact, one study found that people with anger proneness as a personality trait were at twice the risk of coronary disease than the less angry peers. To protect your ticker, it says, identify and address your feelings before you lose control. It's a constructive anger, the kind where you speak up directly to the person you are angry with and deal with the frustration in a problem-solving manner. It's not associated with heart disease, but it's actually a very normal, healthy emotion, says Dr. Aiken. Now, second, anger ups your stroke risk. One study, there was a three times higher risk of having a stroke from a blood clot to the brain or bleeding within the brain during the two hours after an angry outburst. For people with an aneurysm in one of the brain's artery, there was six times higher risk of rupturing this aneurysm following an angry outburst. Some good news. You can learn to control those angry explosions to move into positive coping. You need to first identify what your triggers and then figure out how to change your response, says Mary Fristad, PhD, a professor of psychiatry and psychology at the Ohio State University. Instead of losing your temper, do some deep breathing. Take a deep breath and breathe out slowly. Using assertive communication skills. You, you know, you confront but not aggressive. But just to, you know, to, to settle. But sometimes it, uh, it's, it depends on the situation. You have to... Uh, 
sometimes you have to write it down that will also a release and then and then you can talk to the person you might even need to change your environment by getting up or walking away from the scene says dr fristad three it weakens your immune system now in a harvard university study healthy people uh, I said, healthy people simply recalling an angry experience from their past cost six times no i mean sorry it cost six hour dip in levels of the antibody immunoglobulin a the cell's first line of defense against infection so that's long see i'll repeat that it says on the study were a healthy people just recalling uh, an angry experience can cause your immune system to dip six hours that's long so four ways to let go of an anger assertive communication effective problem solving using humor re re restructuring your thoughts to get away from the black and white all or nothing thinking those are all good ways to cope says Fristad. but you've got to start by calming down see that's why when you're angry you take a deep breath and then breathe out slowly you can make a sound so you divert your mind you slow down your heart rate you increase your oxygen like so take a deep breath and then make a sound or you know slow release of the air That's why, you know, when swimmers uh, make some lap, you know, uh, they do a Olympic size uh, swimming. At the end of the uh, pool, they go down and make bubbles. You know, like go down and bubbles bubble up in the produce bubble in the water because that helps them calm down their decrease their heart rate because when you swim that's exercise so you know your heart is very fast so that's the uh, thing that happens when you do that I'm gonna um, the nose bleed so fourth anger problems can make your anxiety worse in a 2012 study published journal cognitive behavior therapy researchers found that anger can exacerbate symptoms of generalized anxiety disorder called GAD, a condition characterized by an excessive and uncontrollable worry that interferes with a person's daily life. Not only were higher levels of anger found in people with GAD, but hostility along with internalized unexpressed anger in particular contributed greatly to the severity of the GAD sim symptom. 
fifth oh. anger also linked to depression mm. numerous studies have linked depression with aggression and angry outbursts especially in men in depression passive anger where you r ruminate about it but never take action is common says Aiken his number one piece of advice for someone struggling with depression mixed with anger is to get busy and stop thinking so much any activity which fully absorbs you is a good cure for anger such as golf you know if you want the needle point biking yeah like singing dancing listening to music and i know when i when i was younger we i we have a piano and when i get angry i you know i play the piano this tends to full to fill your minds completely and pull our focus toward the present moment and there's just no room left for anger to steer when you got that going number six hostility can hurt your lungs he says um, A Harvard University scientist studied 670 men over eight years using a hostility scale scoring method to measure anger levels and assess any changes in the men's lung infection uh, function. The men with the highest hostility ratings had significantly worse lung capacity which increased the risk of respiratory problems the researchers theorized that an uptick in stress hormones which are associated with feelings of anger creates inflammation in the airways hmm. Number seven, anger can shorten your life. Ooh. Stress is, it says, stress is very tightly linked with general health. If you're stressed and angry, you'll shorten your lifespan, says Fritz Dad. A University of Michigan study done over a 17-year period found that couples who hold in their anger have a shorter lifespan than those who readily says when they're mad. If you're not someone who's comfortable showing negative emotions, then work with a therapist or practice on your own. To be more expressive learning to express anger in an appropriate way is actually a healthy use of anger says Fristad. if someone infringes on your rights you need to tell them directly tell the people what you're mad about and what you need he says So how do we get rid of anger? Suppress rarely. They may not know you're angry, but you'll feel worse inside and hurt the relationship. It says, don't vent. Communication is good, but venting just increases anger. Distract yourself. So you punch that pillow or yell or rant 
about the encounter to a friend not a good idea. Venting your anger doesn't reduce it. Venting, intensif- uh, venting intensifies emotion. So how do you do it? You distract yourself. Distracting yourself, but why would destruction help? Let us see. Uh, thinking about something else means you have less brain power to dwell on the bad stuff. Research suggests it is because both cognitive Cognitive tasks and emotional responses make use of the same limited mental resources. Mm -hmm. That is according to Bradley, 2007, Seymour, 2005, Van Dillen, 2007. That is, the resources that are used to perform a cognitive task are no longer available for emotional process. Accordingly, people can rid themselves from unwanted feelings by engaging in a cognitive activity such as doing math equation or puzzle. or playing a game of Tetris or probably singing your heart out or like for me dancing or singing focusing on a negative emotion will likely intensify the experience of that emotion further and thus make down regulation more difficult leading to lower adjustment and well-being sharing your feelings with others constructively is a good idea but getting it out tends to snowball your anger now now this the third suggestion is ray appraisal is usually the best option. Think to yourself, it's not about me. They must be having a bad day. So you're making excuses for 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 why they're doing that, you know. Uh, and it's you're not doing that for them, you're doing that for for you, you know. Evidence that re appraisal can directly influence your amygdala circuitry in the brain comes from consistent finding in a PET scan, a positron mission tomography, and functional MRI. Studies of healthy individuals showing reappraisal dependent decreases in amygdala activation in response to negative stimuli. In one of Osner's reappraisal experiment, participants are shown a photo of people crying outside the church, which naturally makes participants feel sad. They are then asked to imagine the scene is a wedding that crying that people are crying tears of joy at the moment that participant changed their appraisal of the event their emotional response changes and Oshner is there to capture what is going on in their brain using an MRF a functional MRI as Oshner explains our emotional responses ultimately flow out of our appraisals of the world 
And if we can shift these, those appraisals, we can shift our emotional response. Experimental studies have shown that reappraisal leads to <coughs> decreased levels of negative emotions experienced and increase an increased positive emotion experience. And how many experiments? One experiments in 1998 by Gross, Gross, in 2012 by Feinberg et al. Uh, 2011 by Lieberman et al. Uh, 2010 by Ray et al. And 2011 Shaz et al has no impact on or even decreasing sympathetic nervous system responses. And is there several studies. And the sympathetic nervous system response is the flight or fight, which is a part of the stress hormone, which you, the fight or flight is helpful, but if you maintain it for a longer time, it's it's not good for the body. Leads to lesser activation of emotion gener generative brain regions such as the amygdala and the ventral striatum. So Express your anger. Expressing your anger can take different forms depending on if your anger involves another person or if it is in response to a problem you encounter alone. When you become angry to, at another person, the key to expressing your anger helpfully is to do so assertively but not aggressively. Being assertive means being able to express your needs or wants while still being respectful of others and their needs or wants. It is different from being aggressive, which can mean being pushy, demanding, or even physically health-threatening. To express your anger to another person, try using I statement, statements such as I'm feeling angry because so and so. If you are alone and get angry because of because your computer shuts down in the middle of a paper long paper or you get a bill you weren't expecting, you can express your anger verbally instead of physically. Yelling at your computer won't hurt anyone's feelings but smashing the keyboard will. It says, uh, sublimate your anger. The goal in sublimating your anger is to change that angry energy into something productive. For example, if you get frustrated while trying to figure out a difficult path, math problem, you can use the energy from your anger to redouble your efforts by focusing more carefully. In other words, you uh, change your anger to something productive. Like, uh, I remember one of my psychiatry professors He's, uh, he's tall, good looking, he's like a, an actor, and he admits, you know, he, he likes girls, he likes women, but he doesn't want to, to uh, be unfaithful to his wife. So what he does, he takes care of orchids. And he said that each orchids represent women, and mm, he just smells it. So he sublimates his 
his desire to orchids. So, something positive, which I guess his wife will love the orchids. So, sublimating your anger in different is different from suppressing your anger. Suppressing your anger involves denying it and not acknowledging your feelings. Suppressed anger can turn inwards, leaving you unhappy, passive-aggressive, or even physically unwell. It is much more powerful and productive to use your anger in constructive behavior such as problem-solving. Calm your anger. You can learn to calm yourself when you feel angry. There's numerous workshops, seminars, books, articles in magazine, and even inter- internet in the YouTube. Um, even friends have strategies that work for them. Calming down affects external behavior and internal feelings, as well as controlling those physiological responses your body produces. When you feel angry, such as increased heart rate, ooh, there's a moth here, and blood pressure. One effective way to calm yourself is to practice deep breathing, as I was mentioning earlier. Taking deep breaths with your diaphragm and stomach, while it sounds simple, but the effect of calm, correcting, correct breathing can be quite substantial. Rhythmic slow breathing will slow your heart rate and relax your tense muscle. And I learned that with the yoga where basically teach you how to to take a deep breath and bring slowly, breathe it out slowly and then while you're doing that it also you focus on something. It tells you to imagine something. I think that helped me in my in my college days because I was doing yoga from college and, and also in during medical school. Uh, it refocused me. You can use memory of an actual relaxing scene where you have been or place created by your imagination. You might also want to try using yoga. I use prayers and and uh, reading the Bible. Progressive muscle relaxation technique to distress your tense up muscle. Brisk walking, bike ride, you know, swimming. Me, I do singing and dancing, listening to music, playing the piano before, also play guitar, but now it's easier to click on the TV, put on the, or your phone, I put on the YouTube, on the, my favorite uh, music that I can do praising and uh, singing and dancing. Work out your anger. Sometimes physical exertion can help clear your head of anger or at least get you to a state where one of the strategies listed above seems manageable. You can try engaging in somewhat strange physical activities such as running, a rowing machine, or taking a brisk walk. Um, so there are many ways to work out your anger. So, let me move on.
in the uh, article that I read, Psychology and Jesus. Basically, it's, uh, it's just enumerating also what uh, was published in Mayo Clinic, 10 Tips to Tame Anger from the Mayo Clinic. This is written by Jean Stinnett uh, of the written at, uh, in San Angelo Standard Times. It says, Think before you speak. Take a deep breath, count to ten, calm yourself, think rationally, rationally, sometimes you're wrong. You have to admit that. Once you come, once you're calm, express yourself without being confrontational. Explain how you feel and listen to others. Do the same. Exercise, physical activities, and movement provide healthy outlets for anger. Take a time out. Not, this time out is not just for children. Time away from offers the opportunity to de-escalate and diffuse your hostile situation. It is a mature alternative to enraged behavior. Identify possible solution. List alternative solutions to an issue. Be open to new ideas. Use I statement. Declare yourself with I statement. Claim your frustration and or disappointments in what is going on. Admit your feelings are hurt. Don't hold a grudge. Forgiving and being forgiven are healing. Freedom comes from with letting go of toxic bitterness. Resentment will not change what is in the past. I have been through that. Use humor to lighten the mood. Lighten up, laugh it out, belly laugh. Conflict which arise from a difference of opinion is n are not worth a fight. Agree to disagree. Practice relaxation skills, deep breathing, self-soothing with music or prayer, yoga, and meditation are just a few. Know when to seek help. Realize when professional help is, n are, is necessary. Everyone needs support and non judgmental guidance now and then, even therapy. So, the reference is in the mayoclinic.org Healthy Lifestyle, Adult Health in Depth, Anger Management, published in February Power of mindfulness, anxiety, the illness of our time comes primarily from our inability to live in the present moment. That's according to Abhit Sarkar, Spiritual Guide to Anger Management. He says, know your anger. The first step before even trying to eliminate anger is know your anger. Sit down with your anger and try to understand the nature and cause of it. Once you know what caused, what caused the suffering in the first place, it is easier to take care of it because you need to take care of it as it is a, it's your child. When a baby cries, it means something is bothering him. You cannot help him by freaking out. You need to find out what is bothering them. Mindful breathing. Mindful breathing is the easiest and most efficient way to calm down yourself. 
calm yourself down with the mood. Whenever I find the situation slipping out of my hands, I try taking deep breaths. I have always been amazed by its efficiency. Simply take deep, mindful breaths and imagine the cool air you inhale and the hot, toxic air you exhale. If required, count your, your breaths. It makes you forget the reason behind your animate anger. Understanding, I'm sorry, understanding and compassion. Great understanding leads to great compassion and in return disband anger. When you are angry with someone, you simply miss that person's perspective. Once you begin and try to understand the person, you see the fallacy of your anger and feel compassion for him. You need to remind yourself of what is important in your life. If you love someone and yet fail to get his perspective, you yield to the biggest fully of anger. Restoring communication. Anger prevails because of inconsistency between your intention and its reception. When you're mad at someone, we try to distance ourselves from that person and believe that we don't need them. I've found that talking to the person I am angry with placates me in minutes. The only thing that stops us from doing this is our ego. But the reward is a lot more fulfilling than the sacrifice. Don't let your anger reside in you for long. As soon as it comes down a bit, confess your anger. Moment of Gratitude Amongst all the pain and suffering, looking at the bright side can help you kill anger. Spend time writing down what you feel and list the things that you live for. There is no enemy outside our soul. The real enemy lives inside us. Anger, ego, greed, hate. That's according to Buddha. Mindfulness and breathing. Uh, what the heck? <laughs> I'm getting dyslexic. Mindfulness and breaking your ego can have magical effects on anger. But anger is like a high-speed shaft that does not stop when you kill power. It takes time and resilience to overpower anger. It's true. It takes time and resilience to overpower anger. It might be foolish to expect anger to not occur at all, but at all times, we have better forces to stick to. Now, according to Camille Sacco, Spiritual Anger Management, I got this from thriveglobal.com slash Storage slash spiritual anger management. Oh, I'm having some sound there. She says, let's talk about anger. We all know the feeling when you really get down to it. It all, it all boils down to one thing, expectation. How does she, what does she suggest? Talk to trusted people. Write it down. Journaling. Three, read books, inspirational books. Read the Bible. You can get a lot of things. And, and nowadays, uh, you get a lot from the internet. Information. Especially the YouTube. 
So that's it, folks. Um, I want to expound it some more, but uh, I think I'm getting. A lot of your time and thank you for listening I hope you share it especially for people who are in anger state or hatred state and please pray for these people pray for all of us try to pray the prayer of authority To help cast out the evil one that's causing this anger, fueling it. You, know, you have to cast it out and let the Holy Spirit fill your life because He has all the gifts for us to be able to cope. Amen. So now I'll go. Good night and God bless us all. Keep everyone in prayers. Try to uh, dissipate your anger and sublimate. Yes. Amen. My Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Glory to God.